Black Soul Music Podcast, the only podcast devoted to making soul music relevant again. Let's get started with your host, Todd Woodson. Joining me for another episode of the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. My guest today is a legend in my eyes. She's a member of the all female RB soul band Climax. I'd like to welcome to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast, Miss Cheryl Cooley. Miss Cooley, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I'm excited to be on your show today. Thank you. Oh, no worries. Thank you. It's the, the pleasure is all mine. Trust me. So, uh, people, I mean, I don't feel I really have to introduce. Climax, if you're a fan of R&B music, uh, you know Climax, but for people who haven't heard of Climax before, tell us about, well, first of all, before we get into Climax, tell us about Cheryl Cooley. <laughs> well, let's see. Um, I have been uh, playing guitar since I was 11, so it's is, it is all up and through my vibrational life experience. <laughs> um, I am... Uh, well, well, I'm actually living out here in Los Angeles. I've been here most of my life, but I, I was um, uh, born in Chicago, Illinois. Lived there till I was ten, and my parents moved to California for better weather. <laughs> my uh, uh, start in music was that my my sister was married to a, a jazz musician by the name of Hubert Law, and uh, he uh, happened to be on tour uh, and was staying at my parents' house, and he had his guitar there. And I started, you know, kind of picking at it, and I had a little toy guitar, and my sister saw me and said, hey, why don't we show some guitar lessons? And so on was my musical journey from that point. And, you know, now, I mean, I'm, I'm you know, having a great time, uh, you know, doing uh, the uh, old school circuit and, and, you know, playing the music of the legacy of Climax, you know, a part of my, my whole musical life experience. Uh... I don't know, you know, I, I like to laugh. I like laughing and having a lot of fun and okay. you know, just making light of life itself, you know, just trying to have a good time in life. Okay. And so the guitar, uh, let's get back to the guitar. So you had a I'm sorry, you said your sister was married to a uh, a musician? Uh huh, a jazz musician by the name of Hubert Laws. Brother of Ronnie Law, mm, okay. Amber Law, and Ellie, yeah, that whole family. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And you just sort of gravitated toward the guitar, huh? Yeah, you know, for some odd reason, my parents would always give me a toy guitar every other Christmas, uh, ever since I was four years old. I mean, I saw some pictures of an old, you know, Christmas uh, gathering, and there was a toy guitar. So for some reason, I guess it was in the ether that Cheryl's going to play guitar at some point in her life, so let's get started now. Okay, so are you one of those people who just carry the guitar with you everywhere? I see people like at the bus stop or at restaurants. Well, they just no, no, that's too much. Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, even when I have to uh, travel uh, out of town on the plane, you know, there's a lot of musicians that have to carry their their instruments on the plane. I just check mine in. That's too much carrying for me. I know <laughs> I don't carry it around like. That. So let's get into uh, climax. Now you guys were. As far as I know, I can't remember another um, all-female, particularly R&B band, but I can't remember too many female bands, period. Um, right. How did that all, how did all that get started? Were you guys like friends from high school or how did you guys all come together? Well, let me just say, uh, as of today, Climax is still the only R&B all-female band that has charted on Billboard. Wow. So right now, we still hold that title. But uh, no, you know, I mean, we didn't know each other before we walked into that rehearsal room. Everybody really has has their own story as to how we all wound up together. We didn't know each other. We didn't go to school together. It was almost as if, you know, fate or the universe or whatever your belief system is just kind of threw us in a room together and said, okay, here we go. All right. How did you guys all end up in the room? I mean, how did, how did all that come about? Well, uh, 
uh, the, the the drummer and uh, another uh, percussionist at the time, you know, they had an idea of putting an all female band together, and they went through, you know, different avenues of getting the word out and putting ads in papers and stuff like that to try to get, you know, uh, women together to, you know, put a put a band together and see how it's going to work out. So that's why I said everybody really has their own story. I just happened to be uh, rehearsing with another band in the same rehearsal hall and they just walked in and said, hey, you don't want to play with this band, you want to play with my band. We have an all-female band called Climax. And I'm like, uh, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, it's just really, it was kind of strange how, you know, there was an idea of an all-female band and, uh, you know, we just kind of all came together in different uh, avenues of life. Okay. And so what were those early days like? Did you guys all kind of mesh? It was it like a bond that, I think it was six of you at the time or seven? How many? Yeah, actually, uh, started off at seven of us, but, uh, you know, actually, we designed the uh, recording contract. But we, um, yeah, I mean, we got together once or twice a week at the rehearsal hall and just, you know, jammed together and see what songs we could kind of put together. Um, you know, I mean, at, at that time, you know, bands were, you know, getting together and doing club gigs and stuff like that. But I had to speak for myself. I mean, I, um, when I, you know, when I was a kid, younger, I remember having this dream, I don't know, daymare, nightmare, dream of being on stage playing guitar. And uh, I remember getting ready to, you know, the lights were on, the music was on, I was on stage, it was a big concert. I was getting ready to step up to the microphone and, and sing my first note. And I remember looking over to the, my right at the band and going, oh, it's just kind of odd, uh, that's interesting. And then I looked forward to the audience and, you know, started singing. Well, fast forward, I don't know, whatever, 10, 15 years, uh, I remember uh, we were performing at the Olympic Auditorium in Los Angeles, California. And, you know, the lights were going, the music was going. And then all of a sudden I realized, oh my gosh, I'm reliving the dream. You know, deja vu, we call it, you know, whatever you, you know what it is you believe in, premonition or whatever. But everything was exactly the same as that dream. The music was going, the lights were going, the audience was going. I was playing guitar, I was getting ready to sing my first note, and I thought to myself, wow, let me look to my right to see what it was that I couldn't comprehend in the dream that looked kind of odd. And so I looked over to my right, and what it was, it was an all-female band. And it was just like, boom, I stepped into my, you know, the, my dream, the dream of my life. I just stepped right into it. Okay. So, uh, Climax, um, when when was your first album? When did that come out? Uh, actually, our first uh, album was released in uh, 1981. Okay, 81. And what was, the, what was the title of that one? Never Underestimate the Power of a Woman. Oh, okay. And actually, that was the song that, uh, you know, got us the record deal. I, I actually wrote the music to that. Uh, you know, and it's... Climax kind of has a Cinderella story because we really weren't together, you know, had gotten together that long. It was like less than a year, maybe a few months, and um, we uh, uh, signed a record deal. Uh, and, and how that happened is uh, I happened to be working in a bank, uh, and I was uh, telling my supervisor that I was playing in this all drill band, and I was showing her a picture of it and everything, and she said, well, hey, if you give me a, a demo tape, I'll give it to my uncle. His name is... Uh, Johnny Pate, and he produces P. O. Bryson and Minnie Ripperton. Mm. So we put together a demo tape and gave it to him, and he didn't like it. <laughs> really? <laughs> it just so happened he was uh, having lunch with uh, one of the vice presidents at Solar Records by the name of Margaret Nash. He was having lunch with her one day, and he said, Hi, huh, you know, here's this demo tape of this all-girl band. I don't think they're that good, but maybe you could do something with them. Well, she listened to the tape, and she loved everything that she heard. And she called me and asked me, you know, when were we going to have our next rehearsal because she wanted to come and see the band. And she came and saw the band. She was all smiles the whole time. Uh, the next rehearsal, she brought the president of the company from Solar Records, uh, Dick Griffey, and we were signed within months, just like that. So my thing with that whole story, I always tell people, is when one door closes, that doesn't mean another door won't open. Even though, you know, Johnny Page didn't think it was that good, that didn't mean that Solar Records didn't think it was something that they could see, that they could really uh, mold and build into a, a, you know, a viable artist. Okay, well, I'm sure Johnny Pate is still kicking himself <laughs> for letting uh, for letting Climax get away. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, sometimes in our lives, we, you know, 
we pass people that connect us to the right people. So I don't even think he looked at it because I mean I did talk to him later, you know, and he was really proud of the fact that you know we were signed to a record label that could really work with us. You know, sometimes people don't have the skills to work with the talent that comes to them, but the next person will. Okay. And you said you were Solar. Solar had a, well, they had a roster full of great artists uh, back in the oh, day. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Whispers, Lakeside, Shalimar, oh, gosh, Midnight Star. <laughs> they had a lot of great artists, yeah. Wow. So when did you, uh, when did you realize, um, well, first of all, when was your, when was the first big hit? Uh, I don't know if it was the Men All Paws or Meeting in the Ladies Room. I can't remember which one of those kind of just right, hit. Right. But uh, which one? Which one did you? And did you like the song when you, you guys did it? Well, okay. So what a lot of people don't realize is that you know Climax had two albums before uh, Meeting in the Ladies Room album came out. Mm. So um, you know the whole idea of an all female band, I think you know people weren't quite ready for. Uh, so we our first album like, again, like I said, is Never Underestimate the Power of a Woman. Our second album was uh, Girls to Be Girls, and we had a single off of that record. Uh, called Wild Girls that was produced by these two new producers uh, by the name of Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we were like their first outside project uh, from the time. Really? And then our third album was a meeting in the ladies' room, and the first single off of that album was The Men All Pause. And the, the way that song kind of came about is, you know, we were rehearsing one day, and one of the girls said, Oh, I'm having a hot flash. I think I'm having menopause. But, you know, at the time, we were too young you know, to know what menopause was about. Like, hey, let's write a song called The Men All Fall. And so that's how that title came about. So, you know, I mean, real people will realize that Climax had five albums. Oh, okay. uh, and, you know, I'm not going to say I'm in love with every song that was on the album, but there are certain songs that really are a musical trigger for me. Um, I'll say, you know, the men on pause, definitely. You know, meeting in the ladies' room. Uh, I think my favorite song is Divas Need Love Too, which was off of our fourth album. So, you know, it was really a musical progression uh, that each album we, um, you know, uh, we, we grew musically more and more. Okay. I know one of my favorite songs is, uh, is actually on a soundtrack uh, from one of my favorite movies, the uh, Running Scared movie with uh, Billy Crystal oh, yeah. and the uh, late, great yeah. Gregory Hines, um, uh, Man Size Love. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, uh, that was presented to us because of uh, uh, MCA Records. We were being distributed by MCA Records at the time, and so the, a lot of the artists that we uh, were out then... Uh, they were offering different sound, uh, movie soundtracks to. So that's really how we got a chance to do that. Okay. Well, that song seemed like it was just, I mean, that whole soundtrack was pretty good. I, I know uh, Michael McDonald had that one hit off the soundtrack, too. But, um, but yeah, you guys had a, that was a great song. And I, I just loved the movie, too. And I thought, this, I thought the song was actually perfect for the movie. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah, it was. I, I, you know, I almost have to look at all the uh, different artists that they Patty LaBelle, I think, mm -hmm. had a song on that whole right. soundtrack, too. Now, are you guys, um, now, Climax, you, you said you guys did five albums. Um, what kind of, what happened? I mean, what, why did the, why did some of the band members leave and kind of go their separate way? What kind of caused that? Because you guys were, it sounded like you guys were on a, you guys on a roll. Yeah, you know, I mean, we, we were having, uh, you know, great success with the Meeting in the Lazy Room album. We were out on tour. Uh, you know, and a couple of the girls decided that they wanted to, you know, pursue their solo careers and lead the band. So, you know, sometimes that's unfortunate uh, and unforeseen, but it does happen in a lot of bands. So, you know, our story is really not unique. It might be a little more public than most bands, but, you know, uh, a lot of times... Uh, you know, artists, they want to expand their 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 music or their, you know, their uh, presentation of their musical uh, talents. So, you know, that's just kind of part of the whole, you know, music industry. Uh, people feel like they want to do a, a solo career. But a lot of, most times, really, seriously, most times when people splinter off from their groups and go solo they don't have the same level of success so that was really the unfortunate thing that happened was that you know as a group as a band we were much more successful 
than those that try to go off and do their own solo career. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, maybe people kind of get used to hearing a particular sound. And I understand the whole, you know, the whole creativity thing where, you know, you might be confined in a group where you may not be able to do certain things that you want to do. So I kind of, I, I definitely understand that. Um, is there any, um, now, first of all, you're still torn with uh, Climax, right? Yeah, uh-huh. All right, and I know your website, you sit for your website, it's Climax.com, just for those who wanted to get any more information on Climax. Um, but you have a, it seems like you have an all new, all new band, you're still in there doing your thing, rocking the guitar. Um, was there any thought about reuniting with the, uh, some of the uh, original members of the band or have you guys done that or tried to do that or? Well, you know, it's funny. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, th- there was always a running joke in the band that, you know, I, I've had the same telephone number since they've known me. <laughs> <laughs> and so one, uh, one day, you know, I mean, you know, we, you know, we definitely, uh, you know, were dropped by the record company when the nineties came in and the music changed, you know, and being a live band was no longer popular. So some, you know, uh, 10, 12 years later, uh, I got a phone call from our old manager saying, hey, you know, why don't you get the band back together and I can get you guys on some old school tour, you know. So again, because I had the same telephone number, you know, somebody would call and check in at some point in some year. So I was able to kind of reach out to, you know, most of the girls and see if they wanted to do a reunion uh, situation. And the, you know, the, I, the, the excuses I got, oh, I'm too old, I'm too fat, I got too many kids, don't nobody want to see a bunch of old middle-aged women on stage. <laughs> I got all kinds of excuses. <laughs> but I really believed in the idea and I kept pushing forward. Uh, so, you know, there was a couple of the girls that definitely said they were not interested. So, uh, you know, we decided to have some uh, auditions to try to replace them. And, you know, I really think that the, you know, as the auditions went on, and the, the, you know, the few girls that said they were interested in, in it uh, got a little disillusioned because it didn't look like it did in the 80s, which it's not supposed to, but you know, we don't know this at the time. You know, things just don't feel like they used to. So I really think they got, you know, a little disappointed and disillusioned and, you know, each one started backing out and, you know, saying, I, you know, I want to go and I want to be able to take care of my family. I don't want to leave my job. I don't think it's going to work. So. You know, one by one, they they dropped off of the idea, but I really passionately believed that it could work. So I kept moving forward and finding people to replace them with the understanding that if any of the original girls decided they wanted to come back, you know, of course they would step step back and, and allow them to be in that position. But uh, that's not what happened. <laughs> you know, it was like, you know, they, 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 uh, you know, they felt that I was, taking over but I was really trying to give an open door an opportunity for everybody to reunite so that you know everybody decided to do some other thing uh, we equally all own the rights to the, to the name so there could be you know six different Climax bands uh, so I'm going on to pursue the legacy of Climax I mean as long as the fans show up I'm going to show up and I mean I've been getting really good reactions and reviews because really it's all about the music mm-hmm. it's all about the music it really is all about the music. <laughs> you know, I mean, a lot of times people don't even remember exactly who was in the band, but once they hear those songs and it triggers whatever memories they have, or if it's a, a, a new uh, fan, you know, they, oh, I remember that song, or, you know, yeah, my parents used to play that song. It's really about the music and how the, uh, it affects the listening audience. Okay, yeah, you're right. It is all about the music. And, um, now, I, I, uh, you sent me some information, and you guys have a new song that's out called Love Me. Um, yeah. Yeah, tell me about that. <laughs> well, you know, it's kind of a, you know, mid-tempo, sultry kind of, uh, you know, idea of, uh, you know, the, the woman telling her, her male friend, you know, I, I am a, you know, successful diva, but I still need you to love me, but I don't want you to tie me down, you know, if you L-O-V-E me, love me. So it's, you know, kind of a storyline. As You know, all Climax songs really do have a storyline, some sort of life experience storyline. Okay, right. Cheryl, that's hot. Oh, good. Thank you. Thank you. Now, is there a um, album coming behind that or is just a single? We, well, that's just a single, but uh, we'll be uh, in the process of uh, uh, recording, uh, if, if not a whole album, at least an EP starting uh, next year. 
Oh, okay. Great. Fantastic. And so that's something we can look out for from Climax. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you guys are still torn. Um, what do you have coming up? Uh, oh, where, well, where, can, where can people find you? Uh, okay, well, they can always check our calendar out on Climax.com. That's yeah. K-L-Y-N-A-X-X dot uh, Right now, our first show is uh, March 21st in Ontario, uh, California. Okay. And then there's a couple more shows that actually just kind of <laughs> came through the pipeline uh, in, in April. Uh, I think um, one of them is in Stockton, California, and then there's another date. So, yeah, all those dates are right there on the website. We, we keep it updated. Uh, we have a, a newsletter that we send out if people want to sign up for that and keep up, keep, keep up to date with where we're going to be and when we're going to be performing near them. Oh, fantastic. All right. Well, Climax is, I'm actually in the Inland Empire, so uh, I'm definitely going to come check you guys out in March in Ontario. That's right up the road from me. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. That'd be great. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, no problem. I'd love to hear uh, some Climax live. Never got a chance to see you in concert before, but this would be great. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, please come. Yes, yes, yes. So, tell me about your shows. What are your, what are your, what are your shows like? And you sent me a couple of videos of, um, I think, a Soul Music Fest where you had Stevie Wonder, oh, and that was yeah, that, that was, was great. I know. He just he just all of a sudden appeared, and uh, you know he was backstage and uh, he told uh, you know one of his uh, assistants, you know, I want to get up on stage and play with him. And next thing you know, they're setting up a keyboard and everything, and, <laughs> you know, telling us. Get ready to come on stage with you guys. You know, what kind of sun like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, yeah, that was that uh, Taste of Soul Festival. Taste of Soul, that's what it was, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was, that was great. You know, like how we heard that he was a, a you know, big Climax fan, and he really wanted to, you know, uh, jam with us for a while. Okay. Uh, I mean, we, you know, we've been pretty busy. I mean, we, we've been, you know, I, I'm going to say, you know, I've been doing this, you know, resurgence since about, uh, you know, 2003. And, uh, you know, people keep calling us to perform in different places and stuff. So, you know, it's really great that people still want to hear Climax and still appreciate the legacy. And, you know, when we get up there, we have a lot of energy, we have a lot of fun, you know. We just have a lot of fun, you know, playing the music and making maybe making a little change here and there involving the audience to, you know, p- participate with us and stuff. It's just really a lot of fun. Yeah, it sounds it sounds like it. And I'm sure your crowd is from all walks of life, all ages. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I you know, yeah, well, this, you know, uh, group was definitely there, you know, younger than I am. So they, they definitely are, are teaching me quite a few things that I, I'm amazed at. <laughs> I just leave it at that. You know, sometimes they'll say something, and all I can do is just have my mouth hanging over, like, did you really say something? <laughs> we have a lot of fun. I mean, it, it's been great to, you know, uh, sharing the music with them. They're learning, I'm learning. Uh, the audience is receptive. Uh, so that's really the main thing. As long as the audience and the, the listeners, the ticket buyers are receptive of it, you know, that's really what counts. Yeah, fantastic. I mean, uh, if you don't get a chance, get a, if you get a chance, go see uh, Cheryl Cooley and Climax. Uh, I'm going to go check them out in March in Ontario, uh, see their show. Now, are you guys performing alone, or are you guys part of a festival? What? Uh, it's actually, uh, I, I think there's uh, actually three artists on the bill, so it's, it's a whole concert uh, for that particular one. Okay, and so we got to look for some new music from Climax, Love Me. Is that out already? Yeah, uh uh-huh. Love Me is out. You can find it on our website. You can find it on all the uh, digital distributions, iTunes, Google Play. Uh, it's, it's, you know, distributed worldwide. Uh, and, you know, like I said, uh, 2020, we're going to be releasing, uh, you know, a new el- uh, album or EP. And uh, just, you know, we're, we're keeping the legacy going, you know. Right. Now, let me ask you. Um you know, you've been in this uh, business for a while. What do you think of the state of uh, of music right now? Oh gosh! So I mean, I'm from old school. So I mean, I my understanding is, you know, you get your music training, you you know, you go to a, a real studio, you go and record it, you you know, have a company distribute it for you. So you know, that's really my understanding of how the record industry, I guess, should be. But of course, you know things have changed 
And, you know, I think the music has drastically changed because, number one, you know, the, the music in schools have been taken out. Right. I mean, let's be real. You know, a lot of a lot of artists out there, they got their primary training, uh, learning about music from school, and it's been taken out. So there's nowhere for them to really go and get that, you know, that uh, teaching. I mean, you know, there's a lot of parents out there that can't afford to give their children private lessons, you know, like my parents did. And the only place they can learn music is in the school. So since that's been taken out, there's really no foundation to teach and guide how music should be performed or played or written. So, you know, here we have people that are out there kind of self-teaching themselves or getting on the internet to, you know, learn how to play this or play that. And, you know, playing an instrument takes a lot of time and discipline. And we live in a, you know, microwave society now. And if you don't know how to play the latest instrument in five minutes, you're going to move on to something. Right. <laughs> so, you know, being an instrumentalist is almost, you know, uh, old fashioned now. I mean, there's, there's times I go into the music store and they're looking at me like I'm lost because, you know, first of all, I'm a woman. So, and what could I possibly know about, you know, instruments? And, you know, I'm not a kid just trying to do it for a hobby. I'm actually, you know, a seasoned musician. I'm a foreign object when I walk. <laughs> you know, because people just aren't going in and buying instruments and, you know, learning how to play them anymore. So that affects the music that we hear out there in, in, the, in the radio world. You know, it's, it's, we have to thank our, our good friend, Mr. Bill Clinton, for deregulizing the entertainment industry and that just opened up the door for any and everybody to you know have their own record company and make any kind of sounds whether it's musically uh uh theoretically right or not uh cheryl let me ask you do you think we'll ever see bands again i again my stand is on if they don't bring it back into schools where are they going to learn how to play an instrument and, right. and the other part is it's easier to push a button than it is to do rudiments on an on instrument. <laughs> now, yeah. let's be serious, you know, and to learn how to play an instrument takes a lot of time, a lot of patience. And I mean, yeah, there's people that, you know, they use their time for the computer and all of that kind of stuff, but playing an instrument takes a whole other part of the brain. <laughs> right. So, um, do I think, you know, I, you know, I hate to be pessimistic, but I just don't see it ever getting back. I mean, unless all of a sudden somebody makes it the latest fa fad, this is the latest fad. Hey, look, I can really play a real life instrument. <laughs> it's the latest fad. Let's see how we can make this work. And I, I don't, you know, and but uh, on the other part is, it's so much easier just to push a button and have it play itself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You know, it's kind of six in one hand and half a dozen in another. I'm hoping it comes it comes popular. Now, let me ask you one. This a oh, fun question here. I'm gonna throw this at you, Cheryl. Now, you guys were seven gorgeous women, talented, doing your thing on stage. Did you guys have groupies? Oh my God, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I still do. That's the scary part. I still do. It. But what? <laughs> yeah. So let me ask you, did uh, did the men all pause when y'all walked into the room? <laughs> so those songs were appropriate then. Oh yeah, yeah. Like I said, we wrote songs about our life experience at that time. Okay. Just wanted to throw out. I mean, you hear about female groupies all the time, but I wasn't wondering if you guys had male groupies. Oh yeah. I mean, we're like, and we're living in modern times, so it's both male and female nowadays. It's oh, like, okay. Well, I wasn't going to go there, but, uh, right. okay. I mean, hey, that's the society we live in. That's true. <laughs> that's true. All right. Well, good to know that you guys are still out there doing your thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, it was fantastic. Talk. Anything you want to ask, Cheryl, before we uh, cut it loose today? Well, you know, I just really want to, you know, thank everybody listening to this interview and, you know, that that uh, you know listen to your show and support your show and support Climax uh, coming to the concerts and, and continuing really to you know buy and download the music I you know I am very appreciative I thank you so much it, it really keeps me going I'm able to continue to you know perform my passion play my passion express my passion and you know get up on stage and still make the men all pop <laughs> Okay, well, on that note, 
Uh, this is Cheryl Cooley from Climax. Cheryl, I really appreciate you coming on the show today. I'm a big fan of Climax, and I'm sure I'm not the only one out there. Millions of fans out there. Uh, oh. Keep doing what you're doing. And, oh, thank uh, you. Yeah, we keep following you. And uh, thank you again for coming on the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. All right. Thank you for having me. All right, Cheryl. You have a great day. Thank you. Okay. All right. That's Cheryl Cooley from Climax, and we'll be right back. Calling all lovers of soul music. The time to make soul music relevant again is now. You've been listening to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast with Todd Woodson. If you enjoyed today's show, be sure to tell a friend. Make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing to our newsletter at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Well, that's our show for today. I'd like to thank my special guest, Miss Cheryl Cooley from the band Climax. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And you also can check out the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and Spotify. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at comments at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Don't forget to join us next week for another episode of the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. I'm Todd Woodson, thank you for joining us. See you next week.